All right, then today we're gonna be doing another pawnable.tw challenge, and the challenge that we're gonna be doing today is gonna be called Start. So this challenge, first thing you do is uh, download the file, which I already did on my end. If you see right here, on Start, and I'll just zoom this in. I'll zoom this in a bit so you guys can see it. Start over here, downloaded. And I guess one of the first things we want to do is check what kind of file it is. So we just type file, start. We see it's a ELF 32 bit LSB. It's using the Intel 80386. So that's one thing to keep aware of. So I guess first thing we do is uh, I guess just assemble the file with GDB. So GDB start. I'm using GEF. Uh, I guess an enhanced version of GDB. So anyway, what I'll do is just uh, get the functions in this file. So info functions. We only have one, two, three, four, five functions. Looks like start. So this as disassemble main. Disassemble main. Oh, this as start. This is how you spell it. Okay, disassemble main. Okay, so we first we push on the ESP. Keep note of that. And then I guess I'll just zoom this in right here. Oh, am I, am I zooming this in? All right, then. Hopefully that's enough. Push ESP onto our, this is I guess our stack. ESP, then we push uh, this value in. It looks like uh belongs to the exit function. So we'll push an exit. We'll push in uh, an address. And then after that, we zor out all these values. When you zor the same value with each other, basically zero, so zero, 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 zero. Then so you push in these four values right here, or these five values: one, two, three, four, five. Basically, this is basically a string. If you guys didn't know, so this is basically a string. And then we call. Um, if you see int ox80, you could think of them like system calls. This. Uh, has to do with system calls in the stack, so I guess I'll just pull up like a something right here. Um, int eighty system just calls uh, table Linux system calls table. Hopefully this helps. So we see right here system calls right here. Uh, I think I should look it up. Linux system says calls table. Chromium. So we see system calls table being called. I guess we could check right here. This one's being called AL. AL is for, I think, EAX. Uh, AL instruction. Instruction. Is, uh, what is the AL? Is the memory base adds to the specific of the first argument? To the first argument. So you can think of it as the first argument. We go system calls. We're not using RAX. We're using probably EAX. Yeah, x86. So probably this. System calls right here. This is int 80. It's using system calls. And then the ones we're passing EAX is 3, which is read. Oh, no. I think it's write, then read. Let me check again. OX4, then OX3. And we check. OX4 is write, so write something out, and then next we read in something out with OX3. And then I guess just to be confirmed that this is a string, I'll copy this value. Go to hex to string, hex to string, copy this, pass this in, delete this, and you see the let value. So that's one thing to tell you that this is a string. So we have our notes right here. So we do write, it writes it out, write, writes out the string, then read in the string, writes out a string of OX14 of 20 bytes, writes out a string of 20 bytes, and reads in a string of OX3C, I don't know, I think it's 60 bytes, OX3C. To ASCII, I don't know what this is. Uh, 60. 60. So it reads in 60 bytes. Reads in a string of 60 bytes. You got to like know a bit of assembly, I guess, to help you solve this challenge. 
then uh, after that does add uh, 14 values to ESP so adding these 14 so this is not in the stack for the most part it's whatever we pushed in so OX14 is basically OX14 is basically 20 so we push 20 the reason to do this is to get rid of the string got rid of the string so we want to get rid of this string value because this string value is uh, is one two three four five is five pushes and each push is four bytes long so five times four string is equal to five pushes which is four bytes then that's four times 20 four times five is equal to 20 so the reason we just get rid of we do 20 pushes get rid of that and then we we're back to our uh our day address i'm gonna type this old esp and after that we just return and i guess it calls the exit and then it just exits out for the most part so what do we want to do for this challenge so um for this challenge for the most part what we want to be able to do is write the uh, is to be able to cause a buffer overflow because if we do uh if i exit out right here we see that there's a lot of permission set so nano solve i'll do check.py now check that pi from phone import all and then we'll do elf equals uh start elf and then we just do that python 3 check we see nx disable that means you can run shell code and then no pi and no canary so this has a bunch of uh, security flaws to it mostly the nx disable that means we could get a shell we could write shell code for this a challenge so what i did for the most part and i guess i'll show you guys my solution to solve that pi is first we um start the binary so first we find the offset to reach eip the instruction pointer because with the instruction pointer it points to the address that it's going to call next and i guess how do, how do i get this 20 so show you guys gdb uh start then we'll do pattern create we'll create a random pattern of 100 we'll run start then run start ctf I'll copy this value, insert this, and then uh, find offset of dollar sign RIP. No, uh, and EIP. EIP. Find offset. Uh, I meant to look this up because I always forget. So it's going to take a while. Oh, pattern search. Pattern search. And it found it at 20. So that's how we get the 20 offset that we had beforehand. So exit nano solve dot pi. Oh. Nano solve dot pi. So that's how we get the 20 value in our uh, X in our code. After that, we want to be able to print out the 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 stack pointer because the stack pointer points to whatever gets executed, whatever is executing at that spot. So our stack pointer that we're going to point out is this value. So what is this value? So um, like I said beforehand, if we do GDB, and I guess I'll have two of these up. So I have this one up and then just put this right here and then just zoom this in. Uh, something like that so you guys can see it so nano solve that pi we see our code right here and then gdb gdb start so uh this as underscore start so we send in 20 bytes plus p32 and then which is this specific address right here 
if we check on the right hand side that's um where esp becomes ecx for the most part <sighs> so what this does is we send line after p attach print payload so we send our payload to that so what's going to do for the most part is uh, I, i'll just make another notes so what's what it's going to do is we're going to send 20 bytes of data of data and then our instruction pointer which is going to point to the next uh instruction in line is going to go to our address right here to our address that we have which is 20 bytes plus uh eip it's going to go to 20 bytes of data to reach eip and then we're going to add it to the address so it's going to run all this code it's going to print out let's go ctf blah 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 then it's going to add ox14 it's going to push delete remove all this data from it and then the last value it's going to do is going to print out it's going to put esp to ecx so if you go back to the instructions right here i think chromium ecx is becomes the buffer the buffer that's going to be uh 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 the buffer that's going to be uh, written out and it's going to run out 20 bytes which is an edx let me check right here so ecx is going to point to the stack pointer and the stack pointer is going to point to whatever's on top of the stack so it's probably going to leak this value of the stack and then also this value of the stack but what we care about is this esp value that's pushing at the beginning of the stack so we get the esp value from the stack because this is going to print out this one because this is no longer in place this gets destroyed because of the ox14 so esp gets rid of now so it leaks esp it leaks esp and then after that we get to write in our data again and what we'll do is basically we'll insert our 20 byte thing again 20 bytes of data 20 bytes of data and then we're gonna get our leak esp value but our leak uh, the only problem with our leak esp value is that this gets pushed in ox 14 times so we want to adjust it so it could return to the return address so we'll just do plus 20 or plus uh ox 14 and then plus our shell code so when this runs it's gonna leak our shell code for the most part so i guess i could try it on my end and show you guys more of a hands-on approach so uh cancel so what i'll do is just uh exit out right here and then i just type exit and then just go right here for the most part and show you guys what this does so we found esp our payload 20 shellcraft exev bnsh so the reason i did this is because uh, this creates like the smallest payload that we could get because if i when i try doing the shellcraft or uh, do i have it right here when i try using using this option right here this was too big uh too big of a shell code so i need to find something bigger and the closest smallest thing i can make was uh, this value right here so that's why i had it exv pin sh so it makes it a lot easier then i had to like craft my own uh, shell code for the most part so save yes so i'll do just run this python three solve that pi so this is gonna run and we see right here so and then i'll just put it side by side or i don't know if i can make this bigger i can't make this bigger so you guys have to deal with this for the most part so add esp okay so our instruction pointer uh is pointing to add esp 14 so we'll do ni let's start ctf ni structure pointer next is gonna jump back into this address move ecx and esp because that's the address we did so it was the it was uh we sent in the 20 bytes and then the eip address the address which was the address of move ecx and esp that's the next instruction that's gonna be uh ran so if I do NI, 
we jump on the instruction, the stack pointer. So that's on top. And it's going to run that next. So if we run NI, we see that we jump back to start plus 39. So ESCX. So now we're at the beginning. But this time, ECX now holds, uh, or if I drop NI again, ECX now holds the value from ESP, which is the stack pointer. So this is going to leak our stack pointer. So now if we keep going NI, and NI, until the read function, it writes it out. We see that we leak the ESP address right here. And if we check on our code right here, it matches it with the one right here. So we leaked it for the most part. And now I printed out, I printed out the shell code just to show you guys. And then after that, and I, we want to call it in our read function so we could read in data. And then as you see right here, instruction pointer, this what's going to execute next, going to execute our read in call. And that's reading in data. Instruction pointer next is going to go back 14. So it's going to, I guess, delete whatever we had written beforehand, whatever we have printed out. And then our instruction pointer now has returned, but it's going to return to the stack pointer, which is uh, this value that I found here. And this value is going to point to our top of our shell code again. So if I do NI, and you see right here, this is our shell code that we have. We could check it because if we just, uh, I think if we, if we keep going NI again, NI, 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 NI. We get um, your host is hosting a library debug. Then we press enter. It's right here, switch interactive mode. I guess I forgot to press enter right here. So now we see right here. Uh, there's our shell code that gets written. And then right now we could just type in commands for the most part. So now if we, I guess just change it to nano solve.py put this as remote and then take off comment that out then rerun python 3 solve.py we see that starting up found the esp value send in our shell code is well i guess uh, what i printed out was just like if we were to do it manually for the most part this is how you'll write the shell code for this for exv to spawn a shell and now if i type ls we see a bunch of values but we want to go to home CV start. And then we see flag run sh and start. What I want to do is cut the flag. And then we get the flag. Flag is pawn well. This is your start. And this is how you get the flag for this challenge for the most part. So this challenge was a bit difficult for the most part. It took me a while to understand it and like to uh, understand what's going on. But for the most part, you want to leak the ESP value. The ESP value is just uh, it's a whole values, but it's the last four parts of it found esp link it and i don't know yeah oh it's the very first four values yeah this is the very first four values we found esp asm it uh 20 bytes of shell code like we did last time to reach instruction pointer then we shifted 20 bytes up so it could reach our uh, our shell right here so i guess i'll type right here fails up our buffer then points to shell code and then shell code executes and that was the whole point of this challenge just um yeah that was about it for this challenge hope you guys learned something new today i know i did and peace